This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 100. This series started back in August 2019 with thousands and thousands of features shared in the past five plus years and still going to show you even more. Nothing can describe your amazing support for the channel by sticking around for all this period to make it possible. And now let me show you what's new. Let's start the episode with Google Photos as it got a lot of new exciting features. Let me start by showing you the changes under memories and for the first time ever Google Photos started to create recaps. Here I got my 2024 recap which includes a lot of photos and it has a very high quality and you can save this video to your gallery for later use if you want. Then I got a couple more, one focused on the smiles and the other one is focused on colors. You will also notice that these recaps have their own share button which is centered unlike the normal memories that have these three buttons at the bottom right corner. Not only this but when you try to share a memory now you will see a brand new interface. When you tap on share it will show you two tabs at the top one to share the memory as a video or you can pick specific photos from your memory and share them with others. And while scrolling through one of my memories, I got this brand new interface asking me for the person name, which is the first time for me to see it. On iOS, I also got two new changes related to memories that are not yet available on my Android phones. You will notice here that the memory tab got removed completely. And now when you go to collections, you will see something called moments which will take you to the same exact memories page. Not only this, but when you take a look at the photo grid of any moment or memory, you will see that the photos will automatically slide show like this. So that's it when it comes to memories. Now let's talk about the new changes under albums. Now when you open any album, you will see this brand new overlay menu that will give you the option to share with the ability to turn off the location sharing. Then you get the plus button to add more photos to this album with a new automatically add option that will allow you to select specific people to add their photos automatically to this specific album in addition to the ability to add existing photos by checking this box and lastly you have the edit option that will allow you to reorder remove or add more photos and also add a description or create a highlights video. And lastly, the info pane of Google Photos will now show you if this photo or video is included in any of your albums or memories. So let me show you one example. When you swipe up, you will notice here we have a brand new section called albums. In my case, I have this photo included in an album called Kids in addition to a memory called Family Christmas Cheer. Talking about the info pane, the photos edited using any of the AI features of Google Photos will now show this brand new AI info section that you can learn more about by tapping on this link. And finally, the side menu of the Google Photos website got redesigned. When you compare it to the previous one, you will see it's more compact with less options. And now you can see the remaining storage right in your side menu unlike before. The next app we have is YouTube and here I'm going to show you eight new changes. The first change you will notice here is the new translucent nav bar. So when I scroll you will see that it shows the content behind it and let me also show you how it looks in dark theme. I think this new change looks really nice. The second change is the updated playback speed interface. It's now more compact with some presets to choose from or you can slide your finger which will give you a really nice haptic feedback or you can use the plus and minus buttons for more precision. And when you expand the video description and scroll down you will see a new ask section that will help you summarize the video or recommend related content. And when you play music inside the normal YouTube app and then try to write a comment, the text box will give you a hint about what to type. And this is not the case with the normal videos. So for example, when I open any of the normal videos and then try to write a comment, it doesn't show the same thing. Now let me show you the new changes when it comes to creating or uploading content. Now when you tap on the plus button, it will take you to this brand new screen with tabs at the bottom. The first one is called video to pick a video from your gallery, create a short, go live or create a post. When you compare this to the previous version, tapping the same plus button will show you this overlay card, but now it takes you to a separate screen. Also when you compare creating a short on both, you will see much more options now. So for example, here we have something called effects. 
so you can add multiple effects to your video. Then we have the green screen, retouch, filters, lightning, and also we have the flash, and finally the comments. And all these options didn't exist before. And when it comes to adding sound, now you can use AI to create background music by tapping on this button, give it a command prompt, and choose one of these genres. You can also use AI to create an image for your post. When you compare both side by side, you'll see that now I have this new AI option, which will allow me to describe the image and it will generate it for me. And lastly, now you have the ability to save comments from other videos and use them in your shorts. So let me show you a quick example. When I expand the comment section here, I can tap on the ellipses and then tap on save. It says here comment already saved in shorts creation. So when I go to create a new short, expand this menu, go to comments, I have these two comments already available. So when I tap on it, it will overlay it on top of my video. Then I will start a recording. After recording, you can place this comment anywhere on the screen and you get a haptic feedback to align it perfectly and you can resize it like this. And this is how you can use comments in your shorts. Next, YouTube music. And here I'm gonna show you three new changes. Let's start with the now playing screen as it got a brand new design. And for reference, here is how it looks in the previous version. You will notice that the media controls and the action buttons swapped places. Not only this, but the progress bar has a brand new design that looks very similar to iOS. When you tap and hold on it, it will expand and the font becomes bigger as well, unlike the previous version. The second change is the ability to share songs to start at a specific timestamp by activating this toggle similar to the normal YouTube app. And the last change is the ability to pin songs to your speed dial, and you can achieve this using two different ways, either from the now playing screen by going to the more menu and then tap on pin to speed dial, or you can go to your speed dial and tap and hold on any of the songs and tap on the pin option. And you will notice here that it will add a small pin icon at the top right corner of the album art and it will keep it in the same exact spot all the time. Now let's talk about Google Chrome and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first one is under Chrome settings. When you scroll down a bit and then go to new tab page cards, you will see a new toggle here called safety check. When activated, you will start to see some notifications from the safety check feature of Google Chrome. And here's one of the notifications I have. And in some cases, you might get a notification about your passwords. The second change is also under Chrome settings. When you go to site settings and scroll all the way down, you will see this new toggle called automatically remove permissions, which will let Chrome remove permissions automatically from the websites you didn't visit recently. Next, the Google app. And here I'm gonna show you five new changes. Starting with the discover feed, you might see a slightly different design first. The header font is much smaller than before, and you might see this new carousel showing related content in the same container of any specific article. On top of this, when you go to customize your space, you will see two new options here, one called updates from searches and the other one is called sunrise and sunset. Moving to the widgets, the song search widget now shows Google colors and this is how it looks on your home screen. The search widget also got some new customization options, so you will find this new edit button. When you tap on it, it will allow you to change the theme to either match your device, you can choose light, dark, or match your device colors, and finally choose a custom color using the hue slider and adjust the saturation. Then you have another slider for the transparency. And when it comes to Google Lens, I also found two new changes. Now the results appear in different categories. So when you take a look here, you will see products, homework, visual matches, and about this image. Previously, all the results were stacked on top of each other without any categorization, but this will make things a bit easier to filter the results you are interested in. And when you start Lens from Google Widget, it will immediately take you to the camera preview and the hide your gallery, which you can access using this button. But when you compare this to the previous version, when you start Lens, it will immediately show you your gallery and your camera at the top, which requires two steps to reach the same position. The next app we have is Gemini, and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first change is the ability to use Gemini 2.0 from your mobile app by tapping on this drop-down arrow at the top, 
and here you will find three options the 1.5 pro if you have a subscription 1.5 flash and the 2.0 flash experimental which is the same one i talked about in a separate video but here you will get limited functionality you can only interact with it using text or upload files and photos and finally we got a brand new extension for whatsapp which will allow you to make calls and send whatsapp messages using gemini next we have google meet and here i'm going to show you four new changes Google Meet will now give you the option to send multiple types of messages without the need to initiate a meeting with the other person. So for example, when I open this contact, I have the ability to send any of these emojis to the other person, which he can see in the same exact spot in their own app. Not only this, but when you tap on this send button, you have even more options like sending a photo with the ability to choose any of the effects you see here in this carousel or any of the 360 backgrounds available like this and here is how it looks when you send it then you have the option to send a video and this is how it looks then we have the note in in the note option you can either uh, type normal text choose a different font and color and resize it on the screen then you have the ability to change the background color or draw something and here you have multiple options to choose from you have the eraser and so on and so forth and once done you can tap on send last but not least you have the ability to send voice messages and this is how the voice message looks it's not only a normal uh, voice message but it will have some sort of animation when you send it to the other person and here is how it looks and when you tap on the screen you have the ability to activate or deactivate the captions mute or unmute you can save it to your phone's gallery you can react to it and that's pretty much it next the files app and here i'm going to show you three new changes the first change is the new receive button that you will find at the bottom right corner which will make your phone ready to receive anything using quick share and when it comes to the media player you will see some new changes as well at the bottom you have some media controls with the ability to adjust the volume by swiping your finger over this area and when you play a video you will also see the same thing you can change the vol volume like this and here you have the ability to change it to landscape or portrait view with some media controls and lastly when you open a photo you will see these two new shortcuts one for google lens and the other one will allow you to edit the image in the markup app next google messages and here i'm going to show you the updated photos and videos sharing experience so let me open one of the conversations to show you how it works when you tap on this camera button you will get a brand new interface that will make your life much easier you will first see the camera viewfinder at the top with quick access to your gallery at the bottom and you can get full access by just swiping up and if you want to access your device folders you can tap on this button which will open the system photo picker then we have here the flash toggle at the top right corner some quick shortcuts for the zoom levels that can reach up to 30x using the back camera and 10x using the front then you can apply some effects in photos and videos so let me show you how you can share multiple photos and that's the best part about this new design so let's say i snap the shot with the in-app camera and if i want to add multiple photos i can simply choose from my gallery like this or i can tap on the plus button at the top right corner which will reopen the camera one more time and allow me to keep adding photos to my collection not only this but you have a quick toggle to adjust the photos quality you can choose between optimized for chat or original quality and then you have the ability to write a caption let me also show you some quick tips after using this feature for a while if you are in the photo mode you still can capture videos by tapping and holding on the shutter key but unfortunately it doesn't support the swipe up or down to change the zoom level like other social media apps another thing i noticed when you try to send videos the hd toggle at the top disappears which means you will not be able to send videos in original quality but once you switch to a normal photo the hd toggle shows back again and if you want to delete any of the photos you added to the collection you can simply tap on the trash can button at the bottom left corner 
and in the camera mode when you tilt your phone it will immediately switch to the landscape view and hide the gallery axis like this. The next app we have is Google Maps and here I'm gonna show you eight new changes. The most obvious change in Google Maps is the updated color palette. You'll notice here that Google started to use this new teal color in pretty much all buttons and menus. And when you start the navigation, you will see some differences too. The first one is the removal of the mic button from the navigation menu. And on the left, you will see a screenshot from the previous version. Not only this, but when you tap on report, you will get a redesigned menu with bigger buttons for easier tapping. And the speed trap option got replaced with the police report. And if you are using Android Auto and they came across any of the reported areas, you might see these cards on the screen to start contributing as well, which is the same thing we have on ways for a while. And now let me show you the new changes in the search. The first one is a quick access to your favorites in the carousel right under the search bar. And when I search for anything, I see a slightly different design for the menus. They have more rounded corners and buttons when compared to the previous versions. Moving to the U-Tap, you will also see some design changes. First, the tap name shifted towards the left and instead of being centered like before, the notifications button is now smaller with a fill color around it. Google also removed the messages button and the new list button also got a fill color. And when you scroll all the way down, you will see this new visited carousel that will give you quick access to your timeline. In addition to three other buttons for your timeline, the following and maps. Next, quick share and it got three new changes. Starting with the desktop app on Windows, you will notice this brand new icon for quick share that matches the one on Android. The second change, even if your phone is not connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your PC, you still can transfer in high speeds as shown now on the screen. And lastly, on Android, you can pair with other devices using a QR code in case they don't appear in the list. Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change, starting with the phone app. You will see this brand new design for the audio emoji feature. It has this pill shaped button. Tapping on it will expand the options. When you open the contact page in the contacts app, you will see a brand new design for the message button to match the new icon of Google Messages. The Find My Device app now requires biometric authentication to be able to view your devices. In Google Wallet, when you try to add any of your government IDs using the camera, the app will automatically give you a disclaimer to allow Google Wallet to create a digital version of a pass and it will consider this as a private information. So for example, here I added my passport and when I try to open it, this one requires extra biometric authentication to be able to view it unlike the other passes. Now let's end this video by talking about the Pixel exclusive features and I will start with the screenshots app. Finally, I got the automatic categorization carousel, which was part of the December feature drop. Now you can filter your screenshots like this. You can tap on one or multiple filters. And as you see here, I have plenty of them. The second one is the enhanced now playing feature. And now I can see the album art of the identified songs. And when I tap on any of them, I got this brand new design to play it immediately on YouTube music or tap on the ellipses to get the same old menu we used to have. To activate this feature, you need to go to settings and then sound and vibration, then go to now playing and you will find the enhanced now playing toggle over here. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new features I wanted to show you in today's episode and I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next one.